I'd just like to thank uh, everyone for inviting me here with the opportunity to be able to share some of my research and, and some of my experience in the Dawa as well, especially with Christianity. And um, before, before I start uh, the, the part about Christianity, I want to speak briefly for, for 10 minutes or so just on, on basic advice, uh, some, some advice which I'd like to give regarding uh, Dawa and something that you might be able to benefit from, inshallah. Now, you know, Dawa is, we have to understand what Dawa is. You know, often, you know, many people get caught out with Dawa thinking that it's answering misconceptions or, you know, being good or feeding the homeless. You know, these type of things are actually very beneficial and they actually assist the Dawa. You know, so Muslims having good manners, you know, being uh, the best Muslims we can be. This helps the dawah, you know, this, this assists the dawah. But the actual dawah is the call to Islam, actually inviting the non-Muslims and the Muslims as well to Allah and his messenger and, and the religion of Islam. So we must, we must really understand what we mean when we say we're doing dawah. And one of the advice I'd like to give is first to, to remember and, and to be sincere in actually calling to Islam. You know, often people... Uh, you know, get caught out by trying to always debate, you know, where they, they are, or, or actually present the misconceptions. So you might get a non-Muslim, you might be speaking to a non-Muslim for maybe an hour or half an hour, and you'll actually, the non-Muslim will leave you thinking, oh, you know, Islam is great, you know, they, they have good biryani, mm -hmm. um, they have, uh, you know, good manners. Um, you know, the hijab is a good thing But then they leave you And they don't know anything about Allah and His Messenger So in fact, you've not actually really conveyed the message of Islam You've not actually done You know, you've not actually completed the da'wah On that particular person Now, the intention for that particular person Might only be to remove some of the misconceptions So that in the future You can present uh, Islam to them And invite them to Islam For instance, if you have a colleague at work you might not just come in on the first day of work and start inviting everyone to Islam, but you might have a plan over a six months to a year period to slowly get to know them and eventually have the intention of presenting Islam to them, uh, presenting the core beliefs of Islam so that they can understand our beliefs. Because Islam and inviting to Islam is about the core fundamental principles of our concept of Allah and His Messenger and the Quran and the, and, and the revelation that was sent uh, from Allah to his messenger, to the whole of mankind. So, obviously, if you do have this plan uh, with your colleague, uh, then you know, you know that eventually you will, you will invite them and, and explain Islam to them. Another point is, so when we know what our job is, that our job as part of being a Muslim is to invite to Islam, then we have to stay sincere in doing this. You know, and often... People, you know, unfortunately, you know, some of the things I've seen uh, in the past few years in terms of dawah is, unfortunately, it's almost become like a dawah scene or a dawah culture, you know. And this, this, you know, it's it's not it's not a very nice thing, really. I mean, it's good because it promotes and and gets gets people active in the dawah, but it can also mess with your sincerity in giving the dawah. And for instance, I I, I receive messages on online. Where people saying, look, I've set up my Facebook, I've set up my YouTube, you know, I want to now do dawah. What camera would you recommend? And I'm like, what's going on, you know? And I said, have you done dawah before? No, but, you know, I'm ready. You know, and, you know, mashallah, the intention is sincere, but, you know, they, they need to really, you know, take their time. You know, we don't want to rush to actually go on to YouTube or Facebook. We need to take our time and, and, and stand and, and, and sit with people and study with people, and actually go, go on the streets, invite people to Islam, and make the mistakes as well. You know, you will make mistakes, but you don't have to make mistakes in front of the whole world, you know, and, and, and be accountable for people actually learning your mistakes. So we should take our time when we're actually going onto social media, you know, going onto Facebook and YouTube, and we have to know what we're speaking about. We should be very sure about what we're speaking about. If we don't know the answers, if we don't know what we're speaking about, we shouldn't go there. 
Dawah is, is simple. You just have to explain to them the basic message of Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, convey even one verse. You know, so I'm sure everyone in the room knows Surah Ikhlas, you know, where we can explain the basics uh, of, of, of Surah Ikhlas, that Allah is one, He's self subsisting He's unique, and you can't compare or imagine Allah. It's beyond our comprehension. You know, and, and every, we know that everyone is born in a state of fitrah, so a sincere person will always recognize this. So you don't need to worry, because, you know, there's, there's nothing you can say or do to guide anyone. There's absolutely nothing you can say or do to guide anyone at all. Guidance is purely from Allah. And this is another thing that we need to acknowledge when we're giving da'wah, that we shouldn't think that it's, it's because of our wisdom or because of our, you know, because we're so knowledgeable or eloquent. This doesn't matter. You know, I know a brother, in my opinion, many of the, thing, many of the things that he does in the da'wah, I don't agree with. But subhanAllah, Allah gives him many shahadas, you know. Because guidance, guidance is from Allah. And at the same time, just because we might be seeing shahadas doesn't mean that our da'wah approach is necessarily the right way. You know, I've seen many people come to Islam and, you know, I've seen somebody come to Islam through his drug dealer, you know. That doesn't mean that the drug dealer is the right way, you know. So just, you know, the, the shahadas are not proof that we're doing it the right way. That's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, and Allah will also test you with shahadas. You know, and he can actually use the shahadas to test you. And sometimes you might gain the ego. And you might think, oh, you know, today I had 10 shahadas. And you might, you know, you want to go and report it on Facebook. And, and you can lose this sincerity. So really guard your sincerity in the da'wah. You know, it's already recorded with Allah. You don't know it's in the heart of this person who's took shahada. You know, shaitan will come and take shahada with you. You know, I know a story in Manchester where two policemen took shahada. They were five times a day praying for five times a day for two years. You know, you know, uh, we, you know the benefits of Ayatul Kursi came through an interaction with Shaitan. You know the hadith, right? You know, where, where the, we, we learn about the benefits of Ayatul Kursi because of an interaction with Shaitan. So don't think that, oh, I'm getting all these shahadas, I must be doing the right thing. That might, not, that might not be the case. But that shouldn't stop you also being active in da'wah, doing something for Allah. And I, I remember one brother telling me that, you know, just do something and, it, and anything. You know, and you might even be doing the wrong thing in the beginning, but carry on. And out of the mercy of Allah, Allah can send someone to correct you. And we should acknowledge that sometimes when people come to correct us and help us, that we shouldn't see it as a bad thing. You know, that this is a mercy from Allah, that Allah has sent someone to actually correct us and keep us on the right path. So we should accept the, the sincere advice as well. Another, another thing which I see a lot online is many shahada videos posted online. Yeah? But it's not actually the whole conversation. You know, I have a, a couple of videos on YouTube where it has the beginning and the end. So you have the whole conversation. Okay, so there's actually people can watch the, the video and they can learn how to interact with the non-Muslim you know some of the questions and the psychology which we which we're using and we, when we're speaking to the general public and people can learn from that video but then some videos you see online where people literally you know they'll be in the street and someone's ready to take shahada and say oh you ready to take shahada okay one minute and they pull out the camera and they say okay see and then they do the shahada and they say takbir you know, and that's it. So you only get the actual shahada. And sometimes it's just, instead of takbir, it's just tak, and the, the video's already finished. Like, you know, you don't even have that much, that much time to even, you know, see. So the thing is, this, 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 what benefit is that? You know, we know what a shahada looks like. You know, we know what a shahada looks like. We, do, we don't need to see this. I mean, there might be some benefit to a Muslim. It might help that iman for a, a few minutes. Yeah? But... We shouldn't use the non-Muslim, the, the new Muslim, I should say, as, as an imam booster for the Muslims. That's unfair. Okay? And then when people say, well, how, how can we look after new Muslims? Well, the first point you can look after new Muslims is by not posting them online. Yeah? I mean, the, the two particular videos I have online, one of them, the sister, her, her husband was a Muslim, so I knew that she was going to be safe. You know, I knew that she's not going to be thrown out of her house and made homeless. 
you know, I knew that she's going to be safe. And the other sister, what took shahada, was she'd been looking into Islam for many, many years. Her mother was happy with her being a Muslim. And I still held the video for a few months before releasing it. You know, we take our time, make sure that that new Muslim's okay, that, you know, that, that they're safe. You know, in the, in the mosque in Manchester, there's a man what works there, and most of the time, he's actually, his job is to phone the National Zakat Foundation and try and find help for new Muslims because their family have found out that they're Muslim and they've been made homeless. And their wife or their husband has found out and they've been made homeless. Or their boss found out and they've been made jobless. Yeah? So it's a bit unfair to now just start using this video you know, of someone who has come to the truth just as, a, as, a, as an imam booster for five minutes for, the, for, for a Muslim. Yeah? There's plenty of shahada videos online. Unless you have the whole conversation and unless it's safe for that, then there's no reason to put the video online. There's plenty of shahada videos online for people to be watching for that two minutes of imam booster. Okay? So, you know, think about what you're doing. You know, some people say, well, I got, I got permission off the new Muslim. That doesn't matter. Permission or no permission. Legally, you don't need permission. Yeah, because it's your video and you're in public. But it's not about permission. Because that new Muslim doesn't know the test he's about to go through. He's about to be tested. You know, he's about to go through the biggest test of his life. You know, shaitan is on the back of the new Muslims, especially in the first few months, first few weeks. This is when we see many people that leave Islam. So you, don't, you want to make that test a bit easier for the, per, to, for the new Muslim. Okay? You don't want to rush into them having to go home and explain Islam. Because when you first accept Islam, you, you, have, you don't have much knowledge about Allah and His Messenger. You just know it's true. You've been, you know, Allah's guided you to the truth. But you don't necessarily know everything about Islam. Okay? And you're not ready for all these questions you're going to be asked. I actually didn't tell my parents for a whole two years. Before, before, after becoming a Muslim. And even then, it was quite difficult and it ended up leaving, leading to me having to move house. So, you know, just think about these things. I think these are good points which we can, we, we can think about when we, we're doing the dawah, inshallah. Another point is commitment. You, if you can just be committed, you know, two, two, one, to, one to three hours a week, you know, maybe on a Saturday or a Sunday, if you can do this every week, you will see big results in your community. And, and you have to make du'a. You know, when, you, when you're submitting to Allah, you have to ask Allah and say, Allah, and acknowledge that Allah, there's nothing I can say to guide anyone, only you can guide. If you want to guide anyone, please bring them to me and allow me to be the means. And when you ask Allah, Allah wants to guide people, He's going to bring them to you. He's going to bring them to you, inshallah. So, know that you know, really understand this, that, that the people are not going to accept Islam because of you or anything that you know or say. It's, it's strictly from uh, because of Allah.